we're passionate. We're powerful, but are, are we, we happy? happy? Social media constantly reminds me of my friends' different lifestyles. The FOMO is real. I live with the fear of missing out. Me too, and yet I still can't stay away from social media. Well, all of us born between 1981 and 1996 can't help being tied to technology. We grew up with it. In China, they even call those of us born in the post-90s a digital native. With over 80 million of us, we're America's largest generation. In China, we have five times as many people. And that's under the one-child policy where families mostly had only one child. Can you imagine how many people China would have had otherwise? Oof, that's a lot of people to compare yourself to. I'm always seeing my friends post pictures of where they're traveling next, the new food they're eating, the sights they're seeing. And I'm just wondering how they have the time and money to go to all of these places, like Mexico, Canada, England, and Italy. In 2018, US millennials spent 200 billion in travel. I see a lot of my friends posting about trips to Thailand, Japan, Vietnam, and the US too. But honestly, so many of us are tired from the 996. 996? It means we work from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m., six days a week. That's so intense. Well, now there's a movement online called <laughs> Tang Ping, or lying flat, which encourages people our age to just do the bare minimum at work since so many of us are getting burnt out. In college, they told us to follow our passion. But between my debt from student loans and my hope to own my dream house someday, it's hard not to follow the money. For us, college education is relatively cheap here. Tuition costs under $1,600 a year. Since we're the generation who grew up as only children, a lot of our parents want us to do what we love instead of working on farms and in the factories like their parents did. My parents also encourage me to do what I love. The more I've worked, the more I realize I need a job that fits with my personal values so I can do something I care about every day. I'd rather love what I'm doing than stay loyal to a place that doesn't excite me. Most of us don't tend to stay at a job longer than about three years. A lot of the factories here are calling us the spoiled instead of the loyal ones. They think our parents coddle us too much. Many of my friends are interested in creating small startup businesses of their own. We want fulfillment instead of just financial stability. We're seeking happiness, which is a little different from our parents' and grandparents' generations when their jobs were assigned by the government and they didn't have many personal choices. Many of the jobs that give us more perks are with tech companies in the cities, which attract a lot of people to move there. On the other hand, though, some of my friends are so fed up with the rat race, they're returning home to join the farmer movement. For a simpler way of life? Exactly. Maybe we should start that movement here, too. Most of us live in the city, where we're also working for the growing tech industries and in the service industries. There aren't as many of us living in the suburbs or on farms. Actually, more accurately, most of us live in our parents' home. We're trying to save on rent so we can buy our own homes someday. Well, I live at home too. My parents want to help me get a house like most of my friends my age because it's so competitive out there. The housing market? No, the dating market. There are 30 million more men than women, so women can be pickier and generally want a man who owns a house. My parents are convinced it'll make me a better marriage candidate. Yeah, not gonna lie, having your own house might be more attractive than just living with your parents. Maybe if we made more money, we'd also be more attractive. Over half of us have more than one job just to make ends meet. That also contributed to the longer working hours. Now, with more private enterprises in China, we have more options to take side jobs. We have a huge gig economy here too, since a lot of us want to be our own boss and make our own hours. We want a life, but then our jobs end up becoming our lives. And you make twice as much as we do. Right. But our cost of living is also higher than yours in most urban cities. What are you spending your money on? The necessities, groceries, wellness, and having fun. And even though I'm trying to save for the future, I still want to enjoy my life in the present. So I'll eat out with friends or buy clothes from a brand I support. I'm always shopping online. It's just more convenient. All of the options are right at my fingertips and get delivered directly to my door. My friends and I spend a lot on brand name and beauty products since looking good can land us better partners and better jobs. Do those things make you happy? Honestly, not as much as experiences and travel. It's easy to travel when you're single. 
and I honestly don't even know how I feel about getting married or having kids anytime soon. Raising kids would be a huge expense, and I feel like I can barely afford my own lifestyle. I agree! If my family wasn't always asking me when I'm getting married and giving them grandkids, I'd try to put it off for longer. Our generation's birth rates have hit record lows. Births in 2020 dropped to 12 million, the lowest in nearly six decades. Even with China allowing a three-child policy now, Tang Ping, or lying flat, can be taken to another level to apply to women's choices when it comes to marriage and children, leading them towards not being in a rush and a live-for-yourself philosophy instead. Here, getting an education really reinforced just how fulfilling my career goals can be. How I don't have to be restricted to just being at home and having a family. In the US, we have more women my age receiving a higher education and working than ever. Well, we are the most educated generation in history, globally. That means we also have the greatest responsibility to change the world for the better. Since there are so many of us, we can put our minds to good use and find solutions for the problems we both see in our communities. Not to mention, with our natural affinity for apps and living online, we can use technology to bridge our connection and work together. That's the best thing I've heard all day. It's still just an opinion, but with the future ahead of both of us, I believe we can make it fact. To learn more about millennials in China and across the U.S., go to 1990institute.org. Stay informed and stay engaged. Subscribe to our newsletters and YouTube channel, and follow us on social media.